Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the rehearsal podcast for the week of June 20. We are 321 Improv Comedy. I'm Carl. I'm Mike. And I'm Jeremy. And once again, we're all in the same place. Yep. Here in Louisiana at Camp Fuego. It's week two of six at Camp Fuego. We perform every week on Wednesday night. Today we have a special guest with us. No, it's not Tropical Storm. Cindy, that's headed directly for us here in yep. Louisiana. Since they're saying that it's coming directly for us, odds are good it will not come directly for us. The forecasts are usually wrong. I, I think we're safe. That'd be a good way to avoid whatever weather you don't want then, just to say it's going to happen. Go where they say it's going to go. It's a lot of power. Probably shouldn't have done that rain dance yeah, then. Or... <laughs> so anyway, Hurricane or Tropical Storm Cindy is not our special guest. Our special guest is sitting right over here at the end of the table. I think we should greet her in our usual way. Hello, Hello Whittles. Whittles. Whittles is here with us. Yes. She seems like she's going to refuse to talk. Oh, I mean, I can't talk. Hello. Oh. She'll just talk quietly from the end of the table yeah, where nobody will be able to hear her. Yep, that's me. So we're in front of a live studio audience. Right. Yes. For the first time. Excellent. Live studio. Moving up. Whittles works at Camp Fuego. She's trying to take Alicia's job, but I believe that's a conversation for another day. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about the listener feedback and the greetings uh-huh. for our listeners in other countries. We last week talked about our new listeners in Bulgaria. Yes. Mike, yep. you did not have a greeting for the people of Bulgaria no, we last were week. No, we were in a minivan. We were sitting in the car by the lake, and you had no internet. No. So now you've looked it up. I what fixed it, that problem. Do you have a greeting? And to my the... friends in Bulgaria, I say to you, Zdrasti. Can you say that one more time? It's Z-D-R Asti. Zdrasti. 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 I'm sure you mailed that perfectly. Yeah. Oh, they know. They know. They know. Now, good news. We have more new listeners, this time in Norway. Oh. Ah. I, I gave you a heads up. Do you have a greeting for the people of Norway? Much easier. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi, hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> to my friends in Norway. H-I-H-I. As we were talking about this before we started recording, Whittles said, do you really have listeners in these countries? <laughs> and I said, do you think we're just making this up? To which she replied, you have a t-shirt that you sell that says... We make stuff up. Granted. She's, yeah. Which is true. She's not wrong. It checks so, out. Yeah. But, it's, but it is true that there are listeners in Bulgaria and Norway and like 10 other countries. Yeah. And it's pretty exciting. So it's... Well, it's thanks for listening in. That's fun. It's to hear from them. Your project, Mike, I, I feel like you can do better on the Bulgaria greeting. You need to practice that. Okay. Let's see what it's I can do. We have a lot more driving to do this week. Yeah. Mike has carved out a space in the third row of our van. Yeah. You can see that on our Instagram. <laughs> There's a picture. The second row is not good enough for Mike. There well, was there was no plug. There's always like a plug or something to for the long road trips. I had nothing. I had to go to the way back. But you waited until we started driving. We were in the middle of a bayou somewhere in Louisiana, driving Mike along. Mike folds up down the seats of the second row. Stow and go. Mike's back there making use of the stow and go seats. You had to fold down the second row and fold the third row up and move luggage around. Yes. Because all our suitcases were stacked. It was quite an operation. It was yeah. worth it. I got it done with about ten minutes to go. Now you're in the third row with lots of leg room and a power outlet. Yeah. Like so it's good. You're set. It's all set. So set while you're back there riding back to New Orleans... I'd like you to work some more on that Bulgarian <laughs> greeting because I think I think you can do better. The last thing. We this week we had some travel delays trying to get home. Big storms rolling through Atlanta. Delta was shut down for a couple of hours. Yeah. I sat in Dallas for a while. Mike sat in Atlanta for a while. Then I caught up with Mike and we both sat in Atlanta for a while <laughs> together. We got That's home. Nice. Fun reunion. Sometime after midnight, we finally made it home. The interesting part of that is we often people will ask us how they can pray for us when we're traveling. Our first prayer request is always for our families while we're gone. Our second prayer request is always for the airline to get us where we need to be on time and safely and so that we can make our shows. Yep. I I often say, I tell people that we've been doing this for a long, long time and we've never missed a show due to travel delays. Nope. Yeah, people are surprised. People will often even say, you shouldn't say that because now it's going to happen. I have no problem saying it. I believe the reason that we haven't missed any shows is because that is our prayer request and we often ask that. Yep. We always talk about the fact we fly a ton and all of our travel delays come on either an off day when it's just a travel day yeah. or when we're trying to it's get It's not home. that we don't have travel delays. Right, we have them. We get them, but they're always when we're not, it's not an urgent matter. Right. Getting so home. It's frustrating because yeah, you get delayed. You want to get home. Want to yeah. get home. It's frustrating, but it's better than the alternative of missing a show. Yeah. So We just say we're paying our dues because you yeah. know, I feel like we have to have travel delays eventually, but better so, having going home than going yeah. to a show. 
So we got delayed, but we all made it home and uh, again, <coughs> consider it an answer to prayer, so it all worked out good. We also have a couple of airport stories that came up during our travel delays. We drove past recently the Shreveport Airport, and it reminded us, I believe that's the only airport that any of us have ever walked to to catch our flight. I believe yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> I think we checked into a hotel very, very close. It was really close. Airport, and Mike like, decided, in the morning, I'm going to walk to the airport. It was like a half a mile, wasn't it? Even closer, I think. Oh. I think it was even closer. It, wow. was, it was very doable. We checked it out the night before to make sure that I mean, there was literally a sidewalk from the hotel right to the front door it's of like the airport. It's like they want you to do it. Yeah. It was, it was pretty early, wasn't it? it was, I, yeah, it had like a 6 or 7 o'clock flight in the morning, but I mean... Because you had an earlier flight, and so we didn't have to take you to the yeah. airport. You yeah. just walked. Yeah, it was very handy. Because there's no way we were getting up early to help you out. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> nope, I'm on my own. <laughs> I, I remember asking you too, why are you walking to the airport? Because <clears throat> I can. Because I can. You don't often get that chance. Nope, not the story. Happen. The other story we were talking about was a Buffalo airport. We were flying into Buffalo. Somebody was coming to pick us up. It was clearly somebody who doesn't spend a lot of time around airports. And <laughs> she was not aware of the laws and the rules of airports. She pulled up to the curb at the Buffalo International Airport, parked her car, got out, went inside, and sat down to read a book while she waited for us to arrive. Yep. So we, we're coming down the escalator with our stuff. <laughs> And we see her there with a little sign, I think, it, 3, 2, 1, improve. I'm like, first of all, how do you misspell improv when you handwrite it? I understand the computer typo. It's one thing when spell check does yeah. it for you, but handwriting it, you should be able to get it. I think, I, think we're, I think we're who you're looking for here. She's all right, sure. And then we're following her up, and we're expecting to go to the parking garage or something. No, like, no. nope. Well, and as we're walking out, they're announcing the, 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 the make of her car. So whoever's car this is, you need to move it. It's parked illegally. And she's like, oh, no, that's my car. <laughs> oh, We're boy. like, what are you doing parking at the curb? She had no idea. The white zone has always been for loading and unloading. <laughs> 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 Last week after we recorded the podcast, uh, Lakeside in our mobile rental car studio. That was nice. We had a, it, was, it was a good time. Yeah. It was, it was stellar. Our live studio audience was a squirrel. That, right. that We've upgraded to Whittles. And a boat. <laughs> and a boat. There was right. both that drove by. After we did recorded in the <laughs> mobile studio, we headed for the River Crossing Cowboy Church. Oh, that was nice. That's fascinating. That was me. a good time. Marshall, Texas. Yeah. And with we had about less than twenty four hours notice for that show. I think we talked about it last week, yeah. right? They called us up and the wanted, day before, yeah. They had twenty four hours to put this event together and they were impressive. They had after after the show, people hung out, they had a homemade cookie bar. People brought in homemade cookies that were amazing. They had a gourmet popcorn bar with uh, there flavors were, you've never heard of. Uh, birthday birthday cake, cake flavor, uh, baked potato. Yes, or loaded baked potato rather. Buffalo and ranch. Yeah, buffalo and ranch. Uh, it was uh, parmesan. Yeah, garlic. parmesan and garlic. Yes, fantastic. And probably the most impressive was the Italian uh, soda bar. Mm. Originally a make your own Italian soda bar, but they quickly realized that people like us would mess it up. Yeah, so they actually had some in their help. Yeah. Designated uh, soda artists. Lots of flavors. Yeah. It was what, really good. I think the one that you got, Jeremy, was the best one. We sampled yours. What I, was the flavor? I made a uh, a peach raspberry. Oh it yes, it was good. really good. I went with the like blue Hawaiian mixed with raspberry. Oh, yeah. It was pretty good, but the peach raspberry was it was quite good. Yeah, apparently you take some Seven Up. You uh, put it in a cup of ice, splash a little cup of creamer, like a coffee creamer in there, and, and then uh, a couple flavor. pumps of flavor. Yeah. It's great. Good to go. It's fantastic. We learned a lot. We were at a cowboy church. There was a rodeo arena right outside the church. Yes. A subject came up for a suggestion. Somebody said mutton busting. <laughs> mutton busting. Yes. We were not familiar with mutton busting. I don't think there was a G at the end of it. Mutton busting. Mutton busting. <laughs> there was an apostrophe there. It makes sense after they explain it, right? Yeah. Mutt, you eat, sure. If you eat mutton, that's sheep. Land. Right? No, right. Sheep, yeah. And yeah. It, mutton busting, so it's for it's like like riding a bull, but for kids. It's Yeah, it's kid bull riding, but they I'm ride sure. a sheep. Mutton busting. Sounds you know. like a good time. Yeah. We also learned on the stage at the church, they had. Just typical stage with the background, but there was like a, a building, the side of the building there with windows and a door. Yeah, they made the, the stage kind of look like you're on Grandpa's front porch, you yeah. know, kind of. And but we, but you, you said you talked to somebody who told you that has a name. Yeah, they, they call that little building that they had yeah. up there uh, uh, Grandpa's Kitchen. Yeah, it, it looks, looks like the front porch yeah. of a nice little <laughs> farmhouse or something. And apparently yeah, that's Grandpa's that Kitchen. Term. 
We thought that was fantastic. But that was there. So for the game radio interview, when usually Mike needs to be heard and not he usually seen, leaves the stage, goes back somewhere behind a curtain or behind something. A curtain, but he he was like inches from us. You just stood right. You were right behind us in Grandpa's kitchen with, right. the, with the screen door closed. Open right the screen door, window. and he just was hiding right behind. Nobody me. could see you. I actually felt like I was hiding from a zombie apocalypse or something. <laughs> I was like <laughs> hiding in a little woodshed. That was a good time. I like the Cowboy Church. Hopefully, we get to go back and visit the Great Cross and Cowboy yeah, Church in Austin, Texas events. once again. That was a good time. From there, we headed on to Camp Fuego. Whoop whoop. Whoop 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 whoop. <laughs> you, 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 heard it, you heard it here first. Our live studio. You would think our live studio would be more excited, but <laughs> whoop whoop. I guess is all we're gonna get. Wow. We showed up for week one. Uh, Jeremy got stumped by the Griffin. I did. It was. Uh, it was, it, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I, I believe what happened. Here's here's my analysis. So yeah, J- Mike was acting out a Griffin for you. So well, he acted out first. Oh, did he do? Was it he me did, first? He did the ball. Oh yeah, right. gave me the eagle. And he came over to you to act out a ball. lion. Right. So, ah, Griffin, he identifies with it. Obviously, half lion, half eagle. By the time he got to you, you had forgotten what he had acted out for me. Right. I had moved on. Mike. Mike was acting out a lion. I believe it's because you spend a lot of time trying to get yourself in a mode, a frame, a, a mind, a frame, a frame, a frame of, mind. of mind. Yeah, that's the one. Mindset. A frame of mind where you can ignore everything Mike says. It's most of it is useless. A lot of times in the car when we're driving, your goal is to not listen to anything Mike says. I think during the show you zoned out. You're, you weren't listening. I to accidentally went into that mode. Yes, and, uh, serves you right then. Yeah. And so you forgot about the eagle, so then they got to a lion and you were stumped. Yeah, Mike's trying to combine them together, and I'm, I'm talking about the lion combined with the... Uh, and he's doing, like, little bird claws and, yeah. and like, <laughs> this, like, <laughs> signifying bald, and I'm like, oh, I don't even know what you're doing. And, yeah, it was a struggle. A couple of other good suggestions from Camp Fuego week one. Somebody told, assigned us a job of octogenarian care. Oh, that's yes. right. Care for the elderly. Mike went strong into the character of the elderly person. I'm I'm old at heart. All of a sudden, he identifies with yeah. All of a sudden, you were wheeling yourself around in a wheelchair, asking me to feed you your pudding. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for that day. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the octogenarian? I want the pudding, and I, I want, want you to give it to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Later in the show, I asked for a job, and somebody said you're a nice guy. Oh, thank you. You're so like, that oh, was my job. I'm a professional nice guy. Professional nice guy. I was there to encourage, Why help, not? speak, Hi, give high fives, yeah. walking down the road. <laughs> Worked that well. Uh, we got to go home for a couple of days. We mentioned our travel delays, but we eventually made it. Got to reacquaint ourselves with our families for a couple of days. They were like, who are you guys? Yeah, well, why are you here? And then we were off to Ocoee, Tennessee. Oh, yes. That, that was a pretty cool camp. Yeah. Up in the middle of nowhere, we were with the people from First Redeemer Church of Cumming, Georgia. They're out there having camp in the Ocoee National Forest. It's a good spot. We got to talk about fidget spinners. Yes. Always a highlight. There was some talk about fidget spinners. What else do you have a fidget spinner? I do. I have two fidget spinners. Two. Oh, two. Wow. At the same of time. course you do. Yeah. 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 Awesome. I'm working on it. You know? That came I'm up like, in the show. The thing where I can like switch them, you know? That came oh, up yeah. in the show where there are powerful, you, you were telling a story about getting powerful fidget spinners, one in each hand that will lift you off yeah. the ground. Like a helicopter. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. And then uh, there, you were acting up what appeared to be a nutcracker. Oh, yeah. But apparently it was much more specific More than that. specific. It was specifically a walnut cracker. That Only was, for walnuts. That's walnuts. what they suggested, and that's that they would take nothing less. Because usually a nutcracker is good for all the nuts. Sure. But not this one. This, this one specifically made, was only for walnuts. That's right. Again, I asked for a job, and somebody said, Beards are going extinct. <laughs> Which is not a job. Not, not in any I mean, realm. I it's, asked for something like... 15, 20 minutes before that asked for like a maybe a global crisis or yeah. something like that. So maybe they were just 20 minutes behind in the show. <laughs> they were just late in giving the suggestion. I got one. And then after we're finished, they're still standing there. <laughs> and I took it anyway. I, yeah, I was, sure. I was the, that was my job. I was the guy who was making beards go extinct. Yeah. yeah. Is that called a barber? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I felt threatened. Very zealous barber. I felt threatened. I was coming after you. Yeah. Uh, the highlight backstage in the green room, the guacamole was amazing, first of all. <laughs> this bears noting. We took some of it with us. We tried to, oh, yeah. we tried to save oh, yeah, it. We brought it. And a giant tub of hummus. Yeah. The hummus and the guacamole were amazing. I don't know where they found this particular guacamole or the hummus, but 
They were above average. Props to them, yes. Yeah, we, we appreciate that from the good people who stocked the green room. Do you remember the, remember the people who didn't know what hummus was? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a, a high school event. It was like a fundraiser for the high school. Somebody had asked us what kind of snacks we wanted, and we often say, you know, a fruit tray or a veggie tray with hummus. And these girls thought it was a joke. Yeah, the, when we got there, they're like, and we have your hummus. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, what? What's, what's wrong with the hummus? What's funny about hummus? <laughs> she says, oh, well, we were in the store, and we, were, we had the list, and we knew we had to buy hummus. And we didn't even know what that was. We had to ask people. How do you know what hummus is? No. Crack open a few chickpeas, stir them together, you're <laughs> good that, to go. Am I right, Whittles? I don't think that's how it works. Of course it is. You crack, them yeah, open. crack them open with your walnut cracker. Oh, well, it's not the walnut cracker. It's just for walnuts. Right. You need the chickpea cracker. Mash a cracker. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, Mike, I believe you have some leftover sports nerd trivia that we have not covered. I, I've been ready for weeks. For, uh, weeks. for our new listeners in Norway and Bulgaria, here's how this works. <laughs> I know a lot about sports. I know nothing about what we call the nerd world. Superheroes, comic books, Things, video games. Movies. Right. <laughs> nerd stuff. Nerd Jeremy stuff. knows all the nerd stuff and knows nothing about sports. And Mike is our interpreter. What even is sports? Who allows us to communicate with one another. So often Mike will ask us trivia questions just to show how little we know. You well, ready? I'm ready. I think I have some... I think you both have a shot at this one. Ooh, oh, I've, I've got. We've done What's this. What's our score? We've the done score this, is still one to zero. One to zero. After we've done it, we've probably played the game at least twelve times. Okay, I think I think we might have a score today. We'll see what we can do. All right. Is there a theme? Uh, there's a theme. I cannot say that theme right now. Okay, it would give it away. All right. Uh, let's say. Okay, Carl. We'll start with you. Which superhero has the nickname the Man of Steel? Oh, I think I know this one. No. Do you? I, uh, well, now that I say that. <laughs> okay, I've got it narrowed down to two. All right. I, I believe I'm going to get one answer. I have a 50 50 chance. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Superman. What was your other option? Batman. Batman or Superman? Batman. The I'm, man going, of steel. I'm <laughs> going Superman. And you chose Superman. You chose correctly. You scored. Wow. Well, that's two points for Carl. Two points for me in the history of the podcast. <laughs> Even no. if I get this right, I'm still behind. Now, yes. Jeremy, uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna say that you could score one point for every correct answer here. Ooh. Oh, bonus points. Yeah. Hey. Um, All right. I'm ready. <laughs> Philadelphia yes. has a three professional sports teams. <laughs> Close. Four? I think four, yeah. Mike's a little I'm halfway on He's both. a little bit more on my side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's right. almost as good as uh, Inflate Gate. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. All right. Um, you get one point for every... Oh. Oh, I said Philadelphia. Yeah. No, Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> correct. They Pittsburgh have, has three. They have three, correct. Pittsburgh has good three job. professional uh, sports teams. Can you name... I say we give them a point for anyone that you can mention from Philadelphia <laughs> or Pittsburgh. It's <laughs> ah. not going to matter. Ah. Right. All right, Pittsburgh. Can you name... Three professional sports teams based in Pittsburgh. As a matter of fact, I can. Oh! I know that there are the Pittsburgh Steelers. What sport is that? That is football. Ah, good. Good. one point. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why, but for one one brief moment of lapse in judgment when I was in like sixth grade, <laughs> for some reason I was slightly into. Sports into into football for some reason. That was your sports era. That was a Six random grade. time in my life. I thought that was just the Dallas Cowboys. No, I never liked the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. I always liked the Steelers. Oh, okay. Because I thought team. their their logo was pretty cool. Right. They looked like magic. Right. <laughs> they looked like a you know nerd world. Yeah. And right. so as long as you're looking from the correct side of the helmet, because it's not on both sides. Right. But I I happen to acquaint myself with the Pittsburgh teams. All right. So there's the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Pittsburgh Pirates, oh. and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, he got the Penguins! Wow. wow! For extra credit, the <laughs> random happenstance of me happening to, happening to know all three of those teams. Do you have, know any of the teams from Philadelphia? There, there's <laughs> Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, is that a team? What sport is that? 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey? Good. Oh, okay. oh, nice. Oh, wow. All right. It's pretty good. Whittles, do you know any teams from Philadelphia? I don't. Oh, uh, you know, help. Oh, I no knew all the French friends. Ones, no but I can't friends. help you now. You're on your own. Here's an observation. Oh. We normally are in our homes doing the podcast, or last week we were in the rental car. We're not used to having a table around us. I believe what's going to happen with this podcast is often throughout the podcast, you're going to hear this. Because as we all talk, we keep hitting the table, <laughs> which I'm pretty is. sure is going to show up on the microphone. So by now, people are probably really tired of that. Well, Mike, stop hitting the table. Sorry, we'll get back in our car. Good times. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's coming up this week? We're back here in Camp Fuego for week number two. Yes. Then we get to go home for a couple of days. Woo. And then we are off to Mackinac Island in Michigan where there are no cars allowed. No cars. Lots of bicycles. Horses. Lots of horse-drawn carriages. Lots no of phone, no lights. No, no motor cars. Lots of hoverboards. Did you say no phone? I think no, not a single luxury. I think there are phones. Oh. I think you're going overboard <laughs> Okay. Now. And, I, and so we're going to be doing the podcast, I believe, possibly from Mackinac Island, or maybe Detroit. They're very similar. <laughs> I get them confused. No yeah. cars on Mackinac Island, all the cars there in the yeah, Motor yeah. City. So we'll be back at it again next week. I also want to make a recommendation, if you get a chance, check out Citizen Way's new song, Bulletproof. Have you heard this, Whittles? I have not. you got to go listen to Citizen Way, Bulletproof. It's fantastic. I'll do that. Yeah. We should, in fact, we should... Play that before our show. We heard it uh, all the time before our show uh, over at Net Extreme. Tell Courtney to put that on the playlist. Yeah, let's get that show Wednesday night. Yeah, I'll awesome. hear that. I think that's all the time we have for today. Thanks everybody for listening. We are three, two, one improv comedy. Three Christian guys combined into one ministry, all to bring glory to the one who makes it all possible. Check out our store at three, two, one improv dot com, where you can get your own "I'm Weird" T shirt or Whittle's favorite "I Make Stuff Up." I hope that's there at the store because I don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd love for you to stay in touch with us on social media at 321improv. Thanks for joining us to our studio audience. Hello, Whittles. This podcast ends in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, so that means your head, though. Yeah, I took the lead right I know. Three,